I'm going to express a concern, and that is that we've reached a point where, in astronomy, where the telescopes we're building are at the limit of what can be built with every advanced nation contributing together. It's like the Square Kilometre Array, um, the, the ALMA project in submillimeter, and we have giant, the, the, the European extremely large telescope with 40 meter dish. I mean, uh, and similarly with, with, with the space missions, that basically we've, we're making things as big as we can at the moment, and to make anything 10 times bigger uh, is it's going to be extraordinarily difficult. And so I, we, may have, we may be coming towards the end of a period, which we've been very lucky to live through, in which every wave band was opened up with sp new space missions or instruments, and wonderful discoveries were made quite, quite cheaply, really, at the beginning. And then gradually we got to the point in each field where the, the, the missions and the telescopes are gigantic, they have to be international on an immense scale, and so I cannot see that that can continue <coughs> at the same rate of growth for the next century. I mean, I think we'll have to be very selective about the questions we try to address. Um, the Large Hadron, Hadron Collider is another example. I mean, it's a vast international machine. You really have to think, how are they going to make a bigger machine than that? I mean, it's practically at the limit of what we can put together. Unless you're willing to spend... Uh, you know, 30% of your income on science. I mean, currently, I think you spend about half a percent or something is what governments and so on spend on your behalf on science. But if you're willing to, if you're willing to say, okay, we'll give up football uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give up all, all, all sorts of expensive pleasures and funnel it all into the next big telescope, well, then maybe we can have some bigger telescopes. But it, is, it isn't going to be quite the same as it's been for the past 50 years, I think. It's an excellent question, and I'm going to let Martin have the last word on this and for the panel discussion. We'll find out whether he's an optimist or a pessimist. Is this the real last word? Uh, well, first, I wish Rumsfeld had stuck to philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, and, um, uh, but I'm not quite as pessimistic as Michael. Uh, it's true that any particular subfield does eventually get to this gigantism, etc. But new fields start up, and for instance, planets around other stars, and there's a life on them. This field didn't exist 20 years ago. A lot could be done with small telescopes, ideas of the origin of life, it could be done by individuals with clever ideas. So I think there'll be new subjects starting up where we can uh, work without great resources, um, and I certainly hope so. As science advances, the uh, periphery gets longer and the frontier with the unknown. Uh, therefore gets more extensive. And I think uh, planets around other stars and life on those planets is going to be a very important subject in this century, as well as the more fundamental physics um, areas. Um, uh, there is the question which was alluded to about whether there will be some things which we will never understand because our brains aren't up to it. And I think we must be open-minded about that because um, just as... Um, we know a monkey can't understand quantum theory. There may be some fundamental features of reality which are just beyond the powers of human brains to grasp. We've got to be open-minded about that. But I think there are many that we can uh, grasp, and just as there's been huge progress in the last 50 years, um, there'll be more in the next 50 years. And finally, since uh, the multiverse came up, um, I'd like to end with an anecdote, um, a conference um, uh, where um, I was on a panel and we were asked about uh, how much would we bet on the multiverse. And I said, well, on a scale, would you bet your goldfish or your dog or your life? I was nearly at the dog level. <laughs> and the other person on the panel was Andre Linde. He's the inventor of the eternal inflation idea. And he spent 25 years working on it. He said he would bet his life on the idea. And then at a later meeting, the great theorist Steven Weinberg said, when he was asked a question, he'd happily bet Martin Rees's dog and Andre Linde's life. <laughs> <laughs>